Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about Synology NAS. Now normally about this time of year I would talk about the brand new units from Synology that are up and coming but there has actually been that many announcements in the field of NAS. There's not been many mention of a 2019 or 2020 series and so many of you at this time of year have got the, you know, your end of year budgets for work or the start of the new budget to spend and you're looking at a brand new NAS server to bolster your existing storage array or you're looking for a brand new toy to spend that money on. So, rather than looking at newer devices that haven't even been announced or released in any way, let's look at the existing series of devices. Now, I did a video like this well over a year ago, but since then, of course, prices have changed, software has changed, and the way data is used has changed a great deal. It has evolved, and are some of these older devices getting a little bit long in the tooth to be viable for the task. Now, on for in front of you, in front of me, and in front of you, is the four main four bay devices from Synology. I've tried to squeeze them all into camera as much as possible. On the end here, we have the DS418J. It is their budget device and available now for about 230 quid. It supports uh, RAID configurations. It supports uh, USB. It's got DSM 6.2 in a slightly more limited capacity than some of the other devices, but it is still a Synology NAS that gives you a hell of a lot in such a cost-effective fashion. Move that back. Next, we have the DS418, the standard model. It's available now for about 310 quid, and again, that is without back and without hard drive media. This device arrives with a better CPU, more memory, support of things like BTRFS, and it's a number of different features and functionality of the Disk Station Manager software that aren't available on the budget model. Next up, we can go into the more powerful Intel series and look at the DS418 Play. Now, I know these all look identical, so I'll try to be as pointy as I can, but the DS418 Play is the entry point for some serious hardware. It's the first one with the Intel CPU in this family so far, and better hardware inside and out. And that arrives for again about 360 nicker without the hard drives and without the um, VAT included as well. So increments there that we can see on screen. And finally, by far the most expensive and the most powerful of the lot, the DS918 Plus. This device here arrives with great power inside and out and almost full support of DSM 6.2 in terms of virtualization, surveillance, media playback, Plex, business applications, first and third party, and more. But you pay a price for that. It arrives at about 420 quid without the VAT and without the hard drive media. So again, a hell of a big jump and almost 200 quid more than that first device. So what exactly makes this box here 200 pounds better than that one? So, bring it back, bring them all out in line and talk about this series of devices. Let's line them up one by one. Now, the chassis are nearly identical as you can see. These three are almost completely identical when you look at them, with the one on the end, the J-series there, being the odd one out with this weird retro 1970s toaster affair. Now, all of these bait lines here on the front are ventilation for the inside of the device. There's LEDs for the individual hard drives, a power button, and LEDs for the system and access, as well as business. It is the only one of the four that has a metal chassis. All of them have the Synology ventilated logo on the side. And if we turn it around, we can see that this device arrives with two ventilation fans at the rear that can be adjusted with their RPM up and down. On top of that, the device itself features LED dimming so that all of the LED lights can be increased or decreased in brightness and one LAN port, so link, um, sorry, link aggregation is off the table and one gigabit ethernet there over RJ45 as well as two USB 3 ports. Uh, the hard drives are installed by removing these rear screws from the top and the top of the device hinges backwards to allow you to install hard drives inside. I'm just gonna show you very quickly. So that hinge comes down. Oh no, you have to remove the other screws as well. Let's remove that and hopefully this won't drop down. I'll attach those screws back after the video. I could cut this video here, but I'm not going to. And the back of the device levers off and there are your hard drive base. So hot swapping, not available on this device. Now this device also arrives uh, with a Realtek RTD19953, I believe, sorry, 1293, there you go, nearly forgot, and one gig of DDR4 memory and a two year warranty. That means that this device, although it's got that 64 bit ARM chip, is still a dual core CPU. And on top of that, although it is by far one of the best J series NASs I've ever seen in terms of hardware, 
it is still lesser than all the other three devices. So for RAID storage, it can support you know, DLNA playback, although you're not going to get transcoding, as well as so long as you drive, so long as you moments, and a number of those key applications. You can forget about things like active backup sync. You can forget about things like full utilization of Synology Moments. And of course, virtualization is going to take a big hit with that Synology Virtual Machine Manager not being possible on this device. But for network drives and general business use and surveillance of around 15 cameras, this works very, very well indeed. So next up in the family, when we're not losing screws on the floor, we can look at the DS418. Now this arrives again with a Realtek CPU, but this is the quad-core Realtek, the RTD1296, which is capable of 4K transcoding, and it is a quad-core 1.4 gigahertz CPU, also arriving with two gig of DDR4 memory. Now, this device here has got four bays. Those bays themselves click and load trays with screw holes for two and a half inch drives. So SSD cache is an option on this device. All those trays are lockable, and these are lockable insofar as you can screw the back on, but that's it, and of course you can hot swap. This device also arrives with support of BTRFS, as well as Synology Hybrid RAID system, which means you can have a more fluid RAID configuration where you can mix and match drives over time. On top of that, the device itself has got LEDs there on the front and a USB 3 port on the front for one touch backup. And again, you can log in and have that USB backup system where as soon as you connect the drive, it will start backing up and you can do incremental backups, full backups or time managed backups where every time you connect a USB drive, it will back up the contents of the USB once with differential backups, that's only saving the changes, or a different backup every time so you can have a whole history of backups. And that works in both directions too, where you can run backups of this NAS onto a USB drive every time you connect it. On the rear of this device, then, it's got a plastic chassis, these three are the plastic ones. We have got two rear mounted fans, two LAN ports, and USB 3. Now the two LAN ports are important, because with those, it means you can support link aggregation. You can effectively get two gigabit ethernet by attaching two LAN cables to a lag supported switch or port trunking, or into a network card with two ports on your PC or Mac. The result is that you can get better external speeds on this device and that improves CPU inside with better performance of everything from um, 4K transcoding, although not that dense, to general utilization of a number of those applications from Synology, make this an interesting device and definitely worth the extra spend over this, I would say. However, it is worth mentioning that although Plex is available on this, you're not going to be able to transcode, it, uh, to transcode in Plex. Also, that 1.4 gigahertz quad-core ARM CPU will struggle with multitasking once you have four or five users doing moderately dense applications on this. If you run three or four backups from different locations onto this at once, using the likes of hybrid backup sync or more, this may struggle in a business setting, and particularly if you're doing anything with larger files or graphical representations um, of data, anything that's image-based and more, those big heavy files, this is gonna struggle with over time, both in playback and backups. Which brings me to the next tier in our four bays from Synology. This is the DS418 Play. They say it's the one dedicated to multimedia, but what I would say, it is the entry point of power. It's where we have the first Intel CPU. At the time, it was one of the few NASs that had the J3355 Intel Celeron chip that is a 2.0 gigahertz clock speed core. Uh, times two that can be burst at each core up to 2.5 gigahertz. It transcodes 4K media in H.265 and 264, the older and more denser codec. On top of that, it opens the door to a lot more of those business needing applications as well as AESNI uh, encryption, a much more efficient high read write speed uh, encryption system that these two just don't support. And once you enable encryption, do remember it will lower your read and write speeds because the CPU has to work extra hard something that doesn't happen on this device. And although it is more expensive at 360 nicker, which again is a big old jump from this one down here, if you want to be able to multitask successfully and you're looking for the entry point for a business NAS, this is the one for you. This is where home ends, the DS418, and this is where business begins. It supports, I believe, 20 to 25 cameras in surveillance station software. It supports Synology Drive, Synology Chat, Synology Calendar, Synology Office, Synology everything. 
All of the Synology applications, with the exception of Synology's Virtual Machine Manager, can run on this device, including Active Backup Sit Suite 2. All of those applications that are included in Synology's price tag are available on this device, including that Synology Hybrid RAID system and more. And the fact that it arrives, if we turn it around, with those two LAN ports means you're not missing out on the external speeds as well. And again, I know it's a big dip in price of around 50 quid between these two devices, but if you're gonna use it for business, over time, 50 quid's worth it. If you use this for two years, that works out nothing. You know, every month it's a tiny speck of power, it's a tiny speck of money. And the power difference between them is very important as well because although this is a quad core 1.4 gigahertz and this is a quad core two um, sorry dual core 2.0 gigahertz this cpu is far far more proficient because it's an x86 processor the result is it will do the job better and use less power it's about efficiency and that's why this is better than that but if you're not looking for that kind of business application and multi-user access you might not see the benefit but what if you are what if your business revolves around it? What if you're a photo and video editor who needs fast backups? What if you're a user that needs it fast inside? Hello to the 918. The DS918 here, let's move this one back so you can get a better look. The DS918 NAS is by far the most powerful of the four. It rides with a quad core CPU, the Intel Celeron J3455, which whatever I said about the DS418 play, this is better in every way. Not only has it got a longer warranty at three years compared to the two years on the others, but it's got that USB copy button on the front, just like all the others. And if we look at the rear, we've got our two LAN ports there. We've got all that stuff that we saw previously. But what we also have is expandability. You can add five more drives of storage to this with the DX517, giving you future proofing in terms of your storage. On top of that, this enables virtualization with Synology Virtual Machine Manager. It runs Plex transcoding. It can transcode very, very well indeed with hardware transcoding natively. And if you're a Plex Pass holder, native transcoding on this device. On top of that, it runs all of the Synology applications to the very, very highest degree. But don't expect in terms of virtualization to be breaking the bank. For that, you're gonna to have to look at a Xeon and more. The only disappointments for this, and indeed all of these devices, is a lack of 10 GBE, a lack of PCIe expandability. But with that quad-core CPU and four gig of DDR3L memory that can be upgraded officially to eight and unofficially to 16, the 918 is the powerhouse. And if you can afford it, and you're looking at future-proofing, the 918 is the one for you. So, to summarize, Obviously, if you are very budget conscious, you're going to look at that 418J. The 418J for the budget conscious is the one that's, you know, it gives you a four bay network attached storage device with the software without breaking the bank. But there's no denying you are going to hit that glass ceiling before the two to three years are out. And if you're looking for a network backup to back up another NAS, maybe that's when you should consider it. But if that concerns you and you need to get a little bit more stability, a little bit more power, the DS418 is the one for you. Thanks to that Realtek CPU inside, you are getting performance. And because it's a 64-bit ARM CPU, you are getting efficiency as well. But true efficiency isn't going to be presented in this NAS, which I think is more network backup and you know, a little bit more powerful home user when you can make the jump to this. The 418 Play is for the user who wants to know they can play media. They don't want to worry about the files. This will do it. Maybe not fully in Plex, but natively this will have you covered as well as provide you a greater depth of access to the Synology NAS platform and all its mobile apps, its client apps, and its free applications in the App Center. But if you can stretch to it to that 420 nicker or so that this costs for the DS918 Plus, you won't look back. The glass ceiling on this, you're not gonna hit. And if you are gonna hit the glass ceiling, it was because you needed bigger than this to start with. And that this is the very best Synology 4 way they've ever put out there. One thing I didn't even touch on is the fact that this device, unlike the others, arrives with NVMe SSD cache slots at the base. This means that if you're worried about the performance and speed of your media inside, add some NVMe slots and it will vastly improve your read-write operations, which ultimately will affect all the exchange of data inside your device. 
and with link aggregation on the rear, you remove a lot of the bottlenecks. Don't get me wrong, it's still not 10 GBE, but it's a great little NAS and you would not be looking back if you go for this. It's one of the reasons it's still one of the most popular NASs even now in 2019. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be, of course, covering new NASs as they are announced, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Visit span.com to buy your NAS, learn about NAS at NAS Compares, and don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.